Okay guys, once again, if you're in an RV and you have one of these similar looking refrigerators and you have these boring looking panels, boring, but why do you do that? Don't, don't be boring, be unique. Give you a little tip, flip these guys over so that you're not gonna damage the nice wood grain in case you wanna sell it again later. Flip them over, spray some adhesive on here, go to Walmart, pick out a poster, get any poster, and <laughs> make your own custom fridge panels. Han Solo and Carbonite. What is going on everyone? Hello, Eric here from Nomadic Fanatic. Hope you guys are doing well. The projects on the new RV have officially begun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna need to change out that intro here pretty soon. I wanna go back to old school, so I may be filming something a little more familiar and bringing in the old tune with the new meows. We shall see. But thank you for joining me, guys. We'll be uploading this video with some Nomad Internet. Link below in the video description. Uh, projects have already begun. Look at that shiny wheel right there, yeah. Some people like to put the uh, easy snap-on ones on their RV. Don't do it. Resist the urge to save a little bit of money, guys. That's why this RV was missing two of the four, and uh, you're going to lose them. They're going to pop off on the roads. So these are the Pacific Dooleys that I like with the bolt-on system. So this is a fake one. That's a fake one. There's extenders on the other side. These bolt this and keep this on. There's the front, and there's the back. Nice and shiny. Really brings out a, a better-looking RV. No matter how old your RV, it just makes it look so much better. All right, not the only mod. Look at the front here. We got our ABS uh, bug shield here that will that will help it so that when we're driving, the bugs won't hit the windshield. They'll kind of go up and, well, you can you can see the front cap there a little. <laughs> That's where they'll go instead. Yeah. Anyway, keep some keep some. Uh, I I always get these. Got this one through Modified Auto. They have a they have access to these and floor mats. Also, got the uh, rain guards there for the window. However. Uh, TJ was teasing me because, well, <laughs> in a Class C RV, the overhang is basically a huge <laughs> rain guard. But anyway, I, I I like them. I think they look really good. Oh, well, what else did we do? We didn't do the headlights yet. Apparently, you have to order them one at a time. So I'm waiting on the other set, just like I did in Vanna White. Those will uh, definitely improve the look here. Um, oh, the big one. Frida, yes, I think I'm gonna call her Frida, uh, spent an entire day at Modified Auto getting protected. So, alarm, <whistles> yep. And I could do this on my phone as well, but remote start on the RV so that if I have it switched to air conditioning or heat for the kitties, give it a minute. Oh yeah, oh yeah, remote start. Now, uh, this RV isn't as long as Miranda, uh, but I'm gonna be either towing the car or the motorcycle behind it. And this particular model, 24D, doesn't come with a backup camera stock. That's okay, because I know a guy. <laughs> Modified Auto uh, simply added me one in. There's my seven inch screen, which will show me what's going on behind the RV. There is a camera in the license plate currently on the back of the RV right now, which I may replace later and put it in a different spot. I kind of want to give it some time and see how this works. You don't always need a camera way up here to give you the full view. Um, I can use my rear view mirror and see what the car or the trailer does, and then the camera will show me how close I am to the line so I can react with the steering wheel real quick. We'll see, I might have to eat my words, may have to change it and put the camera up top above the clearance lights after all. But yeah, mods have begun. Uh, before we start on today's projects, though, the most asked question from my last video, ironically, uh, was still, what are you doing with Miranda? I mean, hundreds of comments. So apparently I need to explain what I'm doing with Miranda, which hasn't changed at all. If you've actually been following my channel, you know about the accident. Uh, you know about my insurance. Um, one thing that's changed, officially now, Geico has ruled that I am not at fault in the collision. So I have under 
motorist insurance, whatever that is, um, it's going to be paid for in full. I don't even know my $500 deductible. I don't know anything. They are going to pay for this. The problem is we're still waiting to find a shop to work on it with labor shortages and it's the summertime and um, uh, so so I would still be just stuck here. I would be living in my RV here at the shop waiting to get in for four, six, eight, eight, eight months we even heard at one time. Why would I do that? No, I'm getting back out on the road of this RV. So what are you doing with this RV? Nothing. It's going to sit here and wait to get fixed. Just like nothing has changed. The only thing that's changed is I have a new different RV to go travel in and continue traveling the country while I wait. So what are you doing with Miranda? Nothing. Nothing. Everybody just lost their minds over that. Uh, what a difference having the hot tub inside. In just 24 hours, we went from 59 degrees to 104 there. Wow. I did have to get a new hot tub because that really bad storm at base camp last year completely tore up my Intex. So I'm trying the Coleman. Coleman Salu Spa. It's even got that uh, green Coleman look that you're so used to there. I like it. We'll try that out later tonight. So what's going on inside? Let me show you. Unlike Vanna White, that 1997 camper van that I got about this time last year, um, which nothing worked. I had to replace everything. Fridge, air conditioner, the furnace, uh, the, the propane line was broken. Everything on that RV needed to be updated and fixed. Unlike that, this RV, knock on wood, <laughs> Mostly everything seems to work and seems to work really well. However, there is antifreeze in the tank and I got ready to flush out that system here at the shop. And unfortunately, when I turned on this pump, I heard, I heard a sound I didn't like, gushing water. Now, again, let's just compare Miranda for a minute because Miranda, that my class A coachman Murata, uh, as we determined, is meant to be a throwaway RV, which means if a component goes out, you're just supposed to throw away the entire RV and total it. Hence the water pump, the water pump, which is not accessible in, in, in that coachman. They did change it actually later on. I forgot what year, maybe 2017 or 18, but you can actually replace a water pump without tearing into the wall and carving in and removing everything to get at the water pump. Um, one of the cool things about this RV is that it's very, very easy to simply change a water pump. You want me to show you how easy this is? Let me remove this cushion. Let me remove this other cushion. Gotta remove this piece of wood, like that. And would you look at that? It's a water pump. And look at it, it's like it's telling me, Eric, don't throw away this RV. Just fix this water pump right here. Okay, well that's easy. <laughs> like, really? So this one here, I'm not familiar with this brand Aqua Pro. It does look like it's possibly the original one from this RV in 2001. The diaphragm is leaking in there, so I'm not going to throw this away. I'm going to I'm going to possibly be able to refurbish it and take a look at it or have Wayne or Robert take a look at it for me, but I am going to unhook the DC, bring it into Coleman Campers and see what we can find that's compatible. It doesn't have to be the same brand, but it has to have the the right the same wiring, 12 volt, and it has to have the in and out ports in the same place for the same configuration to fit in that spot. So that's what I'm gonna go do today. I'll let you know how that goes. All right, let's pop this guy in real quick. Oh, it comes with a new strainer too. Oh, and new threaded connectors. I don't need those. That's what I want. Oh yeah. Okay, it is exactly the same. Yep, uh -huh. finish up this last connector. Just hand tight there, that's a a two minute project. All right, we got water in the tank underneath this seat, at least a little bit. It is time. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the water pump on and then hopefully what's gonna happen is this is gonna take a moment to prime and it's gonna turn off. If it keeps going, then we have another problem. And I just haven't been able to test until we have got that water pump fixed. So here we go, ready? Water pump. Come on, turn off. Turn off. Ah, it's not turning off. Crud. Okay, so what does that mean? Hmm. 
Well, I'll tell you what that means. <laughs> uh, we need to investigate the water line. I gotta trace it back. Uh, let's open up this. Let's take a peek down here real quick. Everything's dry around the water heater back there. Yep. We gotta find out why it's not pressurizing. There's a water line behind the toilet. It's all dry. Let's open up the sink here. It's all dry. What the heck? Um, I need to, uh, <laughs> I need to check the section that goes from here to the bathroom. I'm gonna pull out this drawer. Have a peek here. Get the flashlight. And dry. Dry as a bone everywhere. Very dry. What the heck? Wait a minute. Maybe there was just no water in the lines and it hasn't fully pressurized? I'm gonna give it six more seconds. Just shut off. It just shut off. Yeah, there wasn't, we didn't pressurize the whole line. Still, I'm just, I'm just not taking that chance. It hasn't cycled back on. If it were to go burp every five seconds, burp, then you'd have a leak. It sounds like we're good. Yes, that was so easy. I will say that Aqua Pro water pump is very loud. So it's gonna kick on every single time I open it, but here we go, guys. First time. Woo -hoo -hoo! We got running water. Oh my gosh. Ah! We got a leak here in the faucet. Crud. Well, let me get a towel. All right, no biggie, no harm done. Kitchen sink is, uh, needs to look at. Might be a gasket that needs to be tightened there. Is it leaking underneath? You know, it's bone dry underneath, so it's just leaking at the faucet here. I'll work on that later. Let's go to the bathroom, check here. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Perfect. We got running water at least. That's the main thing. Now I can get the rest of the antifreeze out of that tank and start sanitizing that tank. I'll just, until I get this fixed, I won't be running any water to this particular line. So I'll have to make sure that I completely flush that one later, but cool. Um, I've never been too fond of, of RV mattresses, the stock mattresses that come with this. Uh, this RV did still have the, uh, original mattress which is a little different it's called a corner queen and that's because you can see this little angle right there that angle that's so that the the bathroom door would only open this far with that angle cut out now the bathroom door can open all the way so that queen corner bed has a weird cut to it um well this i didn't do this in any of my other tiogas that had this bed frame but i love my 10 inch memory foam bed in a bag type thing. So I simply modified it to fit. Yeah. Now I'm gonna show you, it, it looks ugly though, but you'll never know. I mean, it literally fits perfectly as you're looking at it right now. Uh, but underneath here, I just got a knife <laughs> and I just, I carved it. I carved it all the way along. This is one of those lull uh, 10 inch memory foam. It's ridiculously comfortable. So, um, yeah. And then you put this fitted sheet over and then pull this over and no one's gonna ever know. And it's the most comfortable mattress in the world. Also, you can see the TV's back off. I changed my mind, guys. I took a look at how the previous owners had mounted it to this and it's just not working for me anymore. It's not. Although I kind of like the position because you can have the TV facing the bed or you can flip it around here. Um, I'm just not going to do it. I need to use this space actually for other things like a coffee maker. And, you know, counter space is very limited up here anyway. So, um, well, once again, the same exact system that I got for Vanna White in the camper van. This is the locking, tilting mount so that... 
it locks in place until you flip this up. Um, we're going to be using that on the TV here in a future project, but did want to at least say that I've removed all of the other customizations that the previous owner had made right there. We're going to keep the kitchen counter area pretty stock here and possibly utilizing either this corner below the thermostat or possibly even over here. There aren't a whole lot of outlets. And uh, there's already a coax right here, which I'll be tying into later for my roof satellite dish. Instead of over the air TV, there's an outlet there. Um, you, you know, and I, and I might just have to add some outlets because there really aren't very many. There's this one here. Jeez, where am I going to find the next one? No, nope, none up on the... Okay, the next one is in the kitchen. Okay, and then ironically, they did give me one more right there by the bed to charge your phone or something. So three three outlets in the whole RV, not including the one here in the bathroom as well. And I got a buddy Robert who is a handyman electrician who might be able to add me a few more in convenient places. Yeah. All right, here we go. Activate bubbles. Yeah! Oh my goodness. It's actually a smaller hot tub than the ones I've had before. Uh, that's a good thing because it actually has the same exact pump and heater as the bigger one. So I think that's why it's a little more efficient. Oh my gosh, maybe it'll stay warmer longer. Woo hoo hoo! Ah! This uh, shop space is working out a lot better than base camp did. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. We'll get back to you guys in a bit. How are the kitties adapting to the new RV? Well, one thing's for sure. They are both loving this overhead area. It's like, you know, this high spot where they can both investigate. Opie is very curious about the entire RV, you know, where Tara is just... <laughs> she, you know, she, she's her own soul. They are playing. They are getting used to it. I'm not overstimulating them or anything. I can pretty much confirm that there's no mice in this RV because they haven't caught wind of anything. They haven't chased anything. We are getting ready to uh, bug bomb the RV. Probably that'll be one of our next projects here. You like the new RV, Opie? Terra Bear, is it okay for you? Opie's like, what? Let me block. Let me block. You don't need to talk to her. Yeah, we need to talk to her. She's precious. What do you think, Opie? How are you going to get down without a ladder? Oh, you guys see, I, I've started to decorate with my YouTube 100,000 subscribers plaque there. Not going to overdo it in this RV, but I do need a couple things hung at least. Right, Opie? Yeah? You going to help me get to 1 million? Yeah? Say, rum, rum. Give him. He needs 100 million. Or one million subscribers. You need some, yeah. You got sleepies in your eye. Yeah. So we got a few days of rain coming here in Illinois. Big surprise there. I'm going to take a little break from projects. I have ordered the new faucet. So that'll be here by the time I get back. Uh, going to go on another little adventure away from the shop here in our next video. Sound fun? All right. Opie and, and Tara and I, we'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye. Love you.